This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete and Sebastian Show, we are back. How are you, Sebastian Maniscalco? What's going down? We're getting closer to the special show on live show August 13th at 5 p.m. West Coast time. Getting exciting. How are you, man? Sorry, just a little one. That's right. August 13th, we got the Invent Bright uh, live podcast with fan interaction. Make sure you register. It's free. And uh, getting ready for that. Uh, this cast didn't uh, almost happen today. Another fire brewing, and I showed Pete through FaceTime. Uh, it's three miles away from my house. It's a small brush fire that seems to be under control, but it is a extremely hot day out here with temperatures into the high 90s, which is ideal for brush fires. Once again, don't know how these brush fires are starting. Takes me about four and a half hours to get a log of wood lit in my um, pizza oven, but apparently California is burning, as well as coming off last night, 4.29 a.m., a 4.5 earthquake hit California, Los Angeles, shook Lana and I right out of sleep. Uh, it was a Wow. Rolling one. This wow. thing just rolled right through wow. the house. My Kids head. didn't get up. And I'm sorry. Wow. Earthquake happens. I'm up for the rest of the night. I don't know about you. If it ever happened when you were here. Never had if, one. Never experienced one. I would imagine I right. wouldn't get back to bed. <laughs> but my wife gets up and goes, is that an earthquake? I said, yeah. She's like, that was scary. Right back to back sleep. Back to sleep. And that's the problem. Listen, if California could speak, I'm trying not to swear a lot on this cast, it would say, what do I have to do for you people to understand? I'm telling you, get the fuck out of here. Everybody leave. I'm burning it. I'm shaking it. And still, people are going back to bed. Like, we're not going anywhere. I'd stay up. Like, you know, Rogan is leaving. That big news. He's going to Texas. But, uh... Yeah, man. It's just another day in paradise, I guess, huh? I saw the smoke that you showed me on the camera before the cast. If I had that kind of smoke, I'd be on the phone with half my relatives. And you go, <laughs> you go, give me 15 minutes. Let's uh, see which way this thing is blowing. And I'll let you know if I can do this. Then you come back on. You don't even open with the smoke. You go, yeah, I'm ready. Let's do this. <laughs> you, don't, you don't even go, oh, thank God. We don't have to. Just another day, man. Uh -huh. Just another day here in the hills, so uh, hopefully they got that under control. I'll pop on the TV here in about 15 minutes and uh, see what Fox 11 has to say about what's going on. Um, so, yeah, uh, last night we had a couple come over, good friends of ours, and uh, there's something going on here in Los Angeles in the food scene that I find extremely interesting. Out of the pandemic, yeah, this guy lost his job and was wondering what he was going to do. Now, I'm hearing this story probably filtered down through three or four people. So, you know, it's like a, a game of telephone. This story could be true. It could not. I don't know. But the gist of it is this guy was unemployed, back up against the wall. What am I going to do? He starts making pizzas out of his house. He's got a pizza oven. He starts making pizzas. He starts giving the pizzas to his friends. His friends are like, this stuff is amazing. You got you to gotta start selling this stuff. So it's a deep dish Detroit style pizza. Now, I'm mm -hmm. familiar with mm -hmm. Chicago deep dish, not familiar with Detroit uh, deep dish. Yeah. So the guy, the guy that was coming over, my buddy, last night told me, I, I'm going to get this pizza they basically drop it out of a window and and it's there's no it's not like a uh, brick and mortar nothing right right, all right, all right. Let's, <laughs> let's let's take this in pieces here first of all first i want to start this is a great story i'm loving the story but first of all have you ever that you can recall because i mean i've bitten into things people make I, I think i've been at your house i've had delicious things and they're so good but i don't i don't i can't recall ever telling anyone except our wives that's right 
you, you could sell this or you not. I do. You could sell this, but I've never done. You should sell this. Have you ever eaten anything from a friend where you're like, bro, you need to package this and get it in fucking King Colin immediately? Never. Nah, that's what I'm saying. And 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 Detroit deep dish is this is this just something somebody made up like uh, every other word that's being made up these days to take the place of other uh, words. I I don't know. I never heard of it. I never heard of it either until last night. All right. Did you try it yet? I'm all right. I'm no, pushing I'm, ahead. I'm getting there. Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm getting there. All right. The way this thing is obtained is this guy auctions off slots to get the pizza. This guy makes wow. 16 pizzas a night. That's it. Wow. And you got to you got to get in like you got to go to the website and keep refreshing to get a slot, right? <laughs> oh man, this guy is he's probably working with a home oven and he's like I'm at max capacity, man. This is a this is a feel good story. I'm loving this. Whatever he's doing, yeah, it's it's genius because people want what they can't have, right? Yeah. If this guy was making a thousand pizzas a night, yeah, it's not a story. I know sixteen pizzas a night. Now, uh, how do you get the pizzas delivered to you after he makes the sixteen? Delivered? You got to go pick it up, bro. At his house or his apartment? Yeah. Wow. At the house. Holy shit. That's how good it is. He don't even deliver. You got to go get the damn oh, thing. Oh, my God. So, like, if you wanted one next week, uh, tomorrow, like, you have to order a week in advance, right? I don't know how you get it. Like, this, it's so, there's no price. I, I, I'm, I'm unclear of how you get it. As far as uh, financially speaking, I'm unclear. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, donation. I I don't know what's going on. Not only that, yeah. this guy makes a mai tai and a margarita, like pre-made, and he puts them in these little containers. And there's instructions how to make it. You put four and a half ounces over ice. You shake it five to seven seconds, and you pour it over crushed ice. So he's selling that plus the pizza. Now, I'm very, and I don't know about you, but if I hear someone go, you got to taste this, right away I'm like, sucks. Right? It depends how aggressive they come in with that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm usually with you. What if it's a movie, a documentary, a hotel? First thing in my head, it's no good. Uh, mm, mm -hmm. Overhyped, 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 overhyped. Like it's the same way where I felt with Hamilton, right? When I went to go see Hamilton, and granted, this was this is due to Lana and I have no attention span for anything but we walked out midway through yeah right? no, uh, classic i think uh, that was season three that discussion came up that was yeah hilarious. intermission in, intermission we were out of there <laughs> <Yeah>. and people <laughs> and people were going back six seven times yeah i remember that and now and now <laughs> when, you, when you're talking about pizza i've been around a long time and i don't think i've ever bitten into a slice that was as delicious as someone who told me how delicious it was going to be like the best pizza i ever have is the time i discovered on my own you know walking the city street i'm like wow Almost got to go back in and check a napkin for the name of the joint. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here we go. You got one, obviously. He brings it over. He brings it. I thought you had to go get it. Oh, connections. He, he he brought it. He got it. Brought it over to our house. Oh, all right. All right. Your friend. Oh, last night. Okay. Last night. So this guy opens up the pizza. And it's a rectangle, deep dish. Um, do you have a phone or a computer where you could see a picture that I'm going to send you? Do you have that capability right now? 
Uh, well, I can see it on, yeah, text it to me, and then it'll probably come up, and I won't see you for a second, but that's fine on that. All right, let me, because I, I got I to gotta paint a picture here. Yeah. And, and we're going to, if anyone who gets the cast that starts watching the video, I know more and more of you all, we're going to have this, what Sebastian's showing me right now, will be on the video, so you can check it out. But uh, can this, uh, how many can it feed, bro? And I don't mean, like, yeah. politely feed. I mean, make me not have to worry about how much everybody else is taking off that goddamn tray. Well, I, I'm going to get to something that was very interesting that happened with this pizza. You should have it right now. Basically, it's one, two, three, four, eight pieces. Okay. Cut in oh, square. I like it, man. Wow. Where's this guy getting these boxes during the pandemic? <laughs> Is he, make, is he making his own boxes? <laughs> no, I, 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 the box might look a little bit longer in the in the photo, just the way the picture was taken. Oh, it's a regular size box. Yeah. Yeah. What a view, bro! Holy mackerel! Every time you show me okay. a photo from your house. <laughs> you, all right. Anyway, back well, to he 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 took the photo. He had to take it out there with the view. Looked great. So, thank you. He the pizza. I mean, yeah. And your house, but yeah, yeah, I like the, I like, no, 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 I thought it no. was going to look amateur to pizza, and it doesn't look amateur at all. No, no, so, so the cheese is from Wisconsin, right? Wow, look at that. And apparently the cheese is like some unbelievable cheese. The crust is, is, is crunchy, but the inside is fluffy. We put it in the oven for about three and a half minutes, and I start to eat it, and I'm like, I got to get a I got to get another pizza. Oh my god. You know it's like I'm it's looking. like one of the, it's one of those things where where you eat it here you you could you could put it back on the video. I I'm, I bro, I'm doing <laughs> it is the even the even the pepperoni, anyone who knows what the pepperoni when it does the curl around the edges and the grease puddles inside like little bird baths of grease. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bird bath of grease. I like what a great. I like him throwing a, uh, a, a tomato oh. sauce equator right down the middle of the pie. What is that touch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, beautiful so, pie. Beautiful pie. I'm eating this thing, and I'm like, this thing is, this is delicious. Now, here's what I want to ask you. There's one piece left, right? Mm -hmm. Eight pieces, four people. I think I had one piece, and Lana gave me some of hers. He goes to me, have the last piece. Now, what's your take on this? Well, let me just tell you my take. And I said to him, you want the last piece. Okay. And he goes, what are you talking about? I go, <clears throat> you noticed there was the last piece, right? Because you either went to go see or you looked. You know there's one piece left. Yeah, uh -huh. well, I'm with you. My theory is if there's one piece left of anything and the person goes, take the last piece, that person wants the last piece. Am I am I right? Absolutely. I did a bit about that. Yeah, one hundred. I did it. With, oh, you did with bread. Yeah, but same thing, man. He he he. This, <laughs> I was just about a bit, but yeah, I'm right there with you. This guy wants it so bad, he can't even wait. He's got to throw it out there to see who else wants it. So, so you said that to him, though. So I go, you want the last piece, and <sighs> and he's like, what are you talking about? I said you wouldn't have said anything if you didn't want the last piece, right? And if I take the last piece, you're going to go home in your car and turn to your wife and go, can you believe you took the fucking last piece? <laughs> hey? Right. Well, if there's he four goes, of you with eight pieces, though, doesn't everybody get two? The girls were not eating as much as we were. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where we were in the piece allocation. Bottom line, one left and both men would gladly love to chow that down. And he's being polite. This is... I'm with you. I'm curious. See, I just keep going. So he goes, 
you know, you're right. But I wouldn't say anything to my wife on the way home. But I do want that last piece. But if you want it, I'm not going to judge you either way. You just did. <laughs> this is like this is like right out of uh, the Julia Roberts movie with Richard Gere. What the heck's it called? Pretty Woman. I never yeah, once yeah, yeah. treated you like a hooker. You just did. <laughs> I'm not gonna judge you. Wow, judged. All right. So now, uh, where do you go with this, bro? This Wisconsin cheese must be unbelievable. If we're having this little verbal dance over the last slice. This is the way I look at it. Yeah. God knows how much he paid for this damn thing. Right? And he went to go get this thing. I think it's downtown. Now, if you know anything about L.A., downtown ain't a, ain't a yeah. you know, it ain't close, right? <laughs> so this guy had to risk life and limb to get eight slices of pizza. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but but you're providing <laughs> but you're providing that view with every bite. What's that worth? <laughs> he could be eating it in his fucking garage <laughs> across the street. <laughs> I don't know. If he's your neighbor. I'm sure he's got a great view too, man. No, this guy, this guy, this guy's doing well. He's got I'm sure. multiple view. He's got multiple views. Right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. So this slice has so, his, this slice has his name written all over it, man. So. <laughs> so I feel if he went through all that trouble, hold on, I want to make sure. He, by the way, just so you know, this hairdo, I'm right out of the pool after yeah. swimming with Serafina. This is what this peacock deal is. Um, so all that trouble, I go, and I told him, I go, you went through a lot to get the, go take the, go take it. So he took it. Now I'm looking at him eat it, and I'm, I'm salivating because. Not only can I see him eat it, yeah. I'm hearing the crunch. Because they got, I don't know if it was a butter bottom or uh, in Chicago what they do on some of these deep dishes, they put what they call a cornmeal yeah. on the on the bottom of the I'm watching it, and then I'm hearing him dip into that crust with his teeth, and I'm like, oh, oh. my God. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone not watching this on the video, Sebastian just did a tip the head back. <laughs> Listen, I'm loving this technique. I never thought about that. Whenever we eat something new with friends or family, we're all too busy stuffing our face. You're actually scouting the pizza. You're doing it. <laughs> like, it's like if you're scouting a pitcher, don't have a catch with him. Step aside and watch him have a catch. Now, are you trying to figure out if you could possibly emulate this pie in any capacity, or are you just in, in, wishing you could go buy it? You know, dough for me is not something I'm very familiar with, and I don't think I'll be able to replicate it. Uh, so dough is extremely difficult to to prepare and, and work with. I, I don't think I could do it. My head was at how the hell do I get a slot, right? Now this guy, this guy that's yeah. making this stuff, yeah. he don't care. From what I understand, he don't care who you are, what you do, what type of background you come from. He don't yeah. care. Yeah. All right. All right. So this is like the soup Nazi in Seinfeld in some way. <laughs> Because I was, I was gonna tell you, man, let's step it up a notch and see what it costs to get him in the kitchen. But it, so it sounds like Spielberg probably already tried that move, let alone, you know, who else have a try? You know, it sounds like this guy is just keeping it tight and real. But I like the mystery behind it. Like, I only make 16. You got to come and get it. You got to go. I got to go to his website here. And, 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 and now uh, nobody's done a, a COVID check on one of these pies yet. You don't think like run a COVID over it? Uh, like this is how uh, it works, man. Undercover spy uh, just serving up the virus. That's why it's not going down. I mean, Newsom can't figure it out. He's probably biting into one of those goddamn pies himself. Wow, I get high pitched. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro, this guy's got an Instagram. He's got barely any followers. So the whole He's country says don't take hydrochloricine, uh, but yet you guys are, are picking up pies downtown like heroin. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I'm not even joking. No one's doing a test on it, guys. You know. I don't care what the fuck's on the pizza. Hey, this uh, thing could be covered in. Listen, this thing could be covered in Corona, and I'd yeah. be ordering eight slices. All right? <laughs> right, sounds like it, man. They, it did look unbelievable. This sounds like this guy don't even need Shark Tank once this pandemic's over, <laughs> right? You can tell Mark Cuban can have a slice if he wants. I'll tell him the address in my new place. Oh man. Oh man. This so. Did you get the drink? Did he bring the drink? Bro, I made the drink for uh, Lana and uh, this guy's wife. Yeah. <sighs> Please, but that's now. Now, listen. Yeah. I didn't think this was possible. The drinks were better than the pizza. Come on, man. That's. <laughs> This is not good. People here just watching the show and they're going to quit their jobs and all start cooking pudding and other shit from their grandmother's <laughs> recipe. This is like a, a miracle story. It's a miracle story. Bro. <laughs> this is the only way I could describe the Mai Tai. And I don't know if anybody's ever described a drink like this. The Mai Tai tasted like vacation. Oh. You know? <laughs> Dude, I that's I'm not laughing because that is such an unbelievable description. I have certain songs specifically by Van Morrison. I love the guy, but I can't play him unless I'm on vacation because they just feel like me. Like Bob Marley, he's another one. It's hard to listen to Bob Marley without my toes in the sand, man. So this this drink you're talking about, when it's taking you to a place that you're not even at. That's a special drink. I don't know. Is this, you got the virus guy or is this all like, because here's my question. People are making Mai Tais in bars fresh from scratch. And you're telling me this guy puts a half made one in a pizza box and tells you to put it under the, the, the kitchen sink for uh, four ounces and give it a shake. And then it's one of the best you've ever had. Oh, oh. What is it? A powder? What's in his, what's, what is it? A mix? Like, what is it? It's a liquid. He he basically makes it at home. Yeah. Pours it in a in a in a in a plastic container. And there's about, I don't know, I'd say about three drinks in each thing. And 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 it's like a pre oh. Yeah, you go and you make those uh, those um go to the store and there's uh, bottles of pre made margarita, pre made yeah. uh that's what it is, Just, wow. but it's in a container. And it's his homemade one. Maybe he's got a few special ingredients in there, you think? I don't know what is in there. Wow. But it's delicious, and I can't wait to have one tonight. Right after I put the kids to bed, I'm making a margarita, and I'm going to salt the rim and, and cut some lime oh. and just sit out and watch the fires. <laughs> I mean, built in it, save it there. I'm packing the camper right after this cast. I got, I'm, I'm so psyched to hit the Adirondack Mountains, bro. I'm doing something. We'll experiment. Not not looking or reading any news as soon as this show ends with you for 10 days. Nothing. Only looking for emergencies on my phone from people. Other than that, nothing. So you're going off the grid. Off the grid. Got the campsite for like nine days. Clean the, the camper out. It's so tight. I mean, I got it looking good. I put new tires on it the other, yesterday with my father-in-law. He had one of those guns. You ever use those guns? I've never used one. Always fascinated with it. Did you try it? Yes. He's What my father-in-law does is when he helps me with something, like when I, I had the camper at his place and when we took the tarp off, he's going, the tires, they got cracks in them. I really suggest new tires. They could pop when you hit like 70 miles an hour. Of course, Jackie's like, Pete, we need new tires. So I got to go to the tractor place called like the tractor company store. It's sort of like a Home Depot. And I get new tires and rims. You buy the whole thing. And uh, I just didn't have the right lug wrench. So my father-in-law came over. He don't bring no lug wrench. He brings that whole drill. And then he brings a, a jack. And I was like, it's kind of on jacks already from the camp. He's like, no, we're going to put this under the axle. And then he does the old, I'm going to show you how. So if what happens to you, you'll know. And you, you ever have that? And you're like, ah, shit. That means I'm going to have to do the second wheel. 
Uh, you know, and, and the guy, I mean, the guy's 82 and he's still doing it. But anyway, uh, he showed me how to do them and I did them. And that drill, it's unbelievable, dude. It's like, it's like you're drilling in a little screw into your sheet rocket. And that's it, baby. Done. So camp is ready is to there, go. Is yeah. there a lot of torque behind that? Is it like, uh, do you no. feel a zzz, like, does it twist your body at all? Or? No, no. What happens is, um, you, you know, it spins really fast, the nut, and then next thing you know, the nut stops spinning, and it's going, dit, 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 and you're not fucking it up. It's uh, just letting you know to pull it out now, and you can't believe it. It's two seconds. It's like uh, NASCAR. So uh, you bring up you bring up a point here that uh, I've often wrestled with myself. I'm at an age where, and that's sad to say, I really don't want to learn anything. No. You just last cast, you said you want to step up your technology game. <laughs> well, let me, let, let me, let me rephrase it. Let me rephrase it. Like, like, <laughs> st st <laughs> st stuff like that. Like, yeah. here, let, let me show you how to put a wheel on. Right. Like, I you know what? You know what I think? If this thing flies off while I'm driving, <laughs> I'm calling someone. <laughs> well, well, that's what Jackie Jackie said. Well, Pete, you can just call AAA. And I go, no, nah, I'm afraid the guy's going to pull up and see the trail. The, the camper will go, guy, you only pay for the car. I don't fuck with the, I don't fuck with the camper. And then he's going to leave. You got to get special AAA camper insurance, I think. I don't know. But no, I hear you, man. And then, and then you know, he's told me where you put the jack, and it's like you said, you got to, you got to get down underneath the camper and make sure it's aligned with the axle. Come on, I just, I just cut the cake on my fiftieth birthday, and I'm leaning. But meanwhile, this guy's eighty-two doing it. So, oh my god! Yeah, I know, I know. Listen, I was on a freeway once with my buddy Steve, and the, we had a flat. Now, this is at 1 o'clock in the morning coming home from a nightclub. So I had, like, my uh, my nightclub outfit on. So oh. it was... <laughs> so I don't know if you've ever gotten out of the car when, uh, when you're on an expressway or a freeway where there's cars whizzing by about 80 miles an hour, right? It's frightening. frightening. Especially, if a, especially if a semi comes by. Forget it. Yeah. You might be you might be blind with gravel the rest of your life. It'll blow the cigarette right out of your mouth. It's unbelievable. You're right, man. <laughs> one one semi comes by you, it makes you step another ten feet down into the grassy bank and shit. Right? <laughs> uh, bro, that's suicide, man. Suicide. So we had to change a tire at one o'clock in the morning, and. We put the jack up uh, underneath the the car, yeah. and he had ground effects on his car, and we start cracking, cracking the thing. Tish, the whole ground effect cracked. That's it. That's eight thousand dollars. <laughs> because, because you, that's why you gotta get it on the axle. So what is that? What is that shit? Plastic that you put it on and try to lift the car up by the plastic fucking. <laughs> Oh shit! And you're all in your fucking cabezios. Oh shit! <laughs> Is one guy watching traffic get ready to tell everyone to jump to the side? Oh, I'm doing this with uh, with my with like Giorgio Brutini shoes with tassels. <laughs> <laughs> with, with no socks. <laughs> oh God! Oh. I feel. Listen, I feel if 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 your dress ever consisted of a slip-on Italian shoe, yeah, with no socks, I feel that guy does not know how to do tire changing, oil changing. Uh, building a fence, that outfit alone, you don't see a guy no. that knows how to change no. a tire in that outfit, no. right? No, and the outfit you're describing, even if someone wasn't available to help with the car, and that kind of outfit, I just see the guy locking it up, 
putting a little white fucking hanky in the window and smoking a cigarette while you walk down the show. Like, I'll get it in the morning. I get it in the morning. You ever see that when they put the white in the window to let you know? No, that- I... I mean, no, what is it like a like a like a surrender flag? It's like the car is uh, not functioning, and uh, the owners are aware of that, and they'll be back to get it, sort of a thing. They do it a lot on Long Island. It's like, it's like uh, what do you what do you, I don't even get that. What have you ever been in a car where you just go ah fuck it? I'm just gonna cut through the woods. I'll pick it up tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I've never I've never left my car <laughs> unattended. It's always been in a parking lot. I've never pulled over or right. just said, yeah, you know what? I hope the time I do that, the car's stolen. Because I'm going to tell the guy, I'm going to go pick it up tomorrow, and I'm going to go to the spot. I was going to go, it was right here. <laughs> it was right here. <laughs> that's why That's why you're gonna, you'd be walking down the shoulder with your keys and your shades and your favorite CDs and shit or whatever. Because you're like, you know, you're not going to, I would never do it either, leave it on the shoulder. But um, they never teach you this stuff in driving school. It's the situation you and your buds were in there when you were younger is when you're in those moments in your car where if it breaks down, even if you get to the side, it's, it's too dangerous to stay sitting in it. I'm a sitting duck. But if I yeah. get out to fix it, that's insanity too. Well, I mean, can you call nine one one and go? Listen, I'm on the FDR Drive, right around the right hand. I, I, someone's got to come and put up barriers immediately, because I, I I don't know what to do in that scenario. What do you do? Just get out and 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 get away from the vehicle. Well, I don't know. I mean, the last time this happened to me, I think we talked about it on the cast. Was uh, the bus the, the tour bus broke down? And we were half hanging outside the uh, the the uh, what do you call it when when you yeah. pull off the road the emergency parkway whatever we were half hanging off it we had to call an Uber to pick me up on the freeway. Did they tell you about this? No. Coming back from Santa Barbara, the bus broke down as we are going onto the freeway. So that ramp. Yeah. It broke down and he pulled over to the side, but half of the the, the bus is so big, half of it's hanging out on the free. So I'm on the bus and I just I people you know, but we're on a we're on a tour bus, so we're the biggest thing on the on the street. But uh, still, man, it just takes one right so they're flying by you and you're sitting there half on the ramp, half up the ramp. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. Oh my god. That's what I'm talking so about. We, <laughs> we had to call an Uber. To pick me up, right? Now there's no there's no address in the middle of the freeway. Right. So we gotta tell them what ramp it is. You gotta call pull. So then the Uber pulls up in front of the car and I have to empty the tour bus, the the luggage and all that shit, put it in his trunk while people are whizzing by, right? It's it's not something you should be doing late at night. And you're right, they don't teach you this in driver's ed, where you get out, maybe you go in the lawn. Or in the weeds and wait. I don't know what you do, but what I want to ask you is, how many times you've been on uh, the freeway, freeway, expressway, what have you, highway, and you see somebody walking, right? Right. Now, now, do you ask yourself, how did they get on the freeway? Is this someone that like broke down and is walking, or is this someone that was walking on residential streets and decided? I just cut through on the 690 on the shoulder. Like, <laughs> yeah, right? That's the, always the weird one. When you, when you see some dude in khakis and nice loafers on the on the median and everyone's doing 70, you're like, he, he, I don't even think he's homeless. What the fuck is he doing? Selling newspapers? Yeah. I've never seen a well-dressed person uh, walking on the freeway. I always f- see that person... And go, they, they must be lost, or it's never it's never a guy in a suit and a tie. Oh, put it that way. It's, listen, it's never anybody I pull over and pop open the lock for, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. No, of course not, man. And that's the thing. You drive by these people when they're on the shoulder, 
and you're kind of like, who would be on the shoulder of the highway? You know, you, you know, whatever. I say my words. You know, you like so, so. It's usually like we get a lot around here to beatnicky white dudes with the beards that are just wearing old backpacks. And like, I get that in Montana, but what are you doing on Route Five in Dunkirk, guy? What the fuck? Get a map. You know, there ain't nothing to see here. So, so, oh, God. and then, so you're yeah. not going to pick those dudes up. And then if it is someone whose car broke down and they're trying to give you that wave, like, please stop. I'd be like, look at this fucking killer. <laughs> what do you think I'm a dummy? Oh yeah, stop my car, right? I've seen enough fucking Wes Craven movies, beat it. So it's a lose oh, lose, man. right? It's a lose lose. Like who is it? Can you picture even if there was a priest on the side of the road, would you in the middle of a des- uh, road, would you give it a consideration, man? Right by him. Right by him. But- right by him. I would think this is a guy. This is how sick my mind is. I'd look at him and go, it's a fake outfit. Yeah, <laughs> totally. It's a nice rental. I'll give you that, father. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, <sighs> while we're on priest for a second, I, I, I have a question. I had a couple of questions in various forms I want to ask you. But speaking of your neighbors, right? I don't know. I saw this thing with Fauci where he was saying that when you are in contact with somebody that ends up having the virus, that, you know, there's a, uh, he says it's three to five day window where you could get tested and it still won't come up yet. It might not kick into like the sixth day, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, let's say this neighbor of yours, you go over, you were invited to a neighbor's house, some neighbor, right? You go over mm-hmm. there, you and Lana have dinner, you come back next morning, that neighbor calls to tell you that unfortunately he's fine, feels good, but it turns out he woke up this morning, he tested positive for the virus, right? Yeah. Now, no sooner do you hang up with him, and this goes for anyone out there, use your own scenario, but we always go to the Pope. Let's say for some crazy reason your manager calls you, <laughs> Pope is doing a feel-good tour of the world, and he's stopping in L.A., and you were on the short list to come to this location and meet him. Have you been around anyway? Now, you you know, <laughs> right? Even if you might have it, it's not going to show for five days. Do you lie and not let them know you're at your neighbors and risk giving the Pope the Wuhan special just so you can meet him? Well, I, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what's going to happen and how it's all set in place. The Pope. If you're going to go meet him during the coronavirus, Mm -hmm. has his own testing center where you get swabbed before you go in. Oh, by the way, let's let's not forget you showed. We were looking at remember that video we watched uh, episode. I mean, season seven of the Pete and Sebastian show where the Pope was knocking hands away. He he didn't want to touch people before there was a fucking virus. Sorry, I'm using (laughs) f word with the Pope. This guy, this guy, has completely. I haven't seen the Pope since the virus. Have you? This guy haven't even met. Has he been doing masks? No, but right? That's a good point. Shouldn't he be walking around maskless going, you know, God, you know, will find the way to keep it with me or not? You know, like, I don't know. <laughs> oh, he's on lockdown watching reruns of Frasier. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and not to get into the virus too much, but uh, man, you te- you text me this morning. That uh, Fauci suggested wearing goggles, right? So I I took that, I ran with it. I went right to Instagram, and I did another video. I don't know if you saw it. No, no, I haven't. Damn. <laughs> I did another video, right? Yeah. With, with goggles on. Now, here's my question to you. Right. Are they going... Okay, here's the plan. We talked about this before. Right. Hit them with the masks first, or then hit them with you could pick it up on a on a doorknob. Right. And right. and it, 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 to scare them even more, around the beginning of August, slam them with the guy. Oh, now. I, <laughs> I thought there was nothing else they could hit us with, right? <laughs> <laughs> now what's next? I mean, honestly, God, do they do they do they in three weeks do they go listen? This thing's this thing is out of control. You gotta put cotton in your ears. Uh, that's it. That's it. <laughs> what the, 
<laughs> it's going to be hazmat suits, bro, before you know it. Like Outbreak with Dustin Hoffman. Everyone's going to be walking around in yellow suits, just talking like... Listen, by the way, and I know this is coming out a week later than where it's airing right now, but I don't know if you yeah. saw this, but to add what you're saying, just yesterday, our country... I think DJ Hank could play the other, the name the other country. I don't know. I think it might be China, but another country and us on the same day launched probes up to Mars to land on Mars to check to see again if there was any form of, I mean, we're bumping into each other trying to find another place to live. It's like, they're down there saying what you said, hit them, hit them with the, with the goggles now. We didn't even get up to Mars yet. We're still looking for real estate. By the time... We're done. We're going to be fully garbed, standing in front of spaceships. And they're going to be waving goodbye to us, moving to Mars. What? I don't get it, man. I, I, again, I don't come to this show for facts uh, or, 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 or anything else. But yeah. How the hell do they find out that the virus is coming through your eyeball? So, for example... You come in, they test you, you got it. Mm -hmm. How do they know how to go, oh, it's coming through the eyeballs now? Like, how do they know that? I, 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 and I, that's the thing, because Fauci says the orbits are the nose, the mouth, and the eyes, right? Now I'm sitting there going, all right, what about the ears? The asshole is covered. We get that. So, again, <laughs> I, I see it now. It's like a kid's rhyme, you know? First we talk about the hands. Then we talk about the face. Then we talk about the nose, right? The, the last lyric is the ears. Fauci's saving the ears for September, right when the kids are going back to school. He's going to go, plug your fucking ears. Oh, shit. Right? I mean, that's, that's uh, you're right. I, I got to think because it... Yeah, earmuffs is ne is next, and uh, it, it's it's just unfortunate, man. It's unbelievable. There is literally no no end in sight. I got, I got some. Go ahead. And, and by the way, does he does he? I, I feel like sometimes he's not aware of his position in in the sense that I feel like he's biting into a maybe he's even biting into this homemade slice going. But bottom line is he's like, uh, yeah, now you can actually get it in your eye, and then people are like, well, what, what? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Well, yeah, yeah, you're the guy though. You're the guy. You're saying it like you're saying it like you heard that too. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, like the article, the headline, I didn't read the article, the headline just said he suggests goggles. What suggest what I wanna know. <laughs> Yeah. What? Did someone did someone last night call him and go, Fouch, listen. <laughs> uh 50-50 shot, you could get it through your eyeballs. I don't know what you want to do with that tomorrow, but <laughs> that's what we're finding over here. All right. I I need, like, a story behind how he got to goggles. And is he at night? I don't know if this guy's married or not. Is he, sleep, <laughs> is, is he in bed at night? Like, you know, Lon and I, Lon and I talked before we go to bed. Talk about whatever, what happened today, the kids, what's right. going to happen tomorrow, I got to call so-and-so. Right. Is he going Is he going to turn to his wife and go, oh, man, tomorrow I got to tell him to wear goggles. Uh, how should I do that? Should I say suggest? Should I say it's mandatory? <laughs> and you got to think the wife is going, what the fuck are you talking about, goggles? <laughs> like, like, is there anybody in the inner circle going, I wouldn't say that, you know, like, <laughs> I don't, I don't even think he gives it that much thought. You know what I think? Like he does at night, like last week, you know what I think he did at night? I think he watched you, your monologue. So he does. <laughs> he watches it on a late night TV, then he rolls over and then he just like, I want to know Fouch, like you're saying, if 200 people with, with the virus in a row coughed in my face. And the only thing unprotected was my eye. Out of 200, how many times am I going to get it? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, probably never. But, you know, uh, not, what is this fucking... Come on. Suggest? Shit. So, well, I, I feel like they lay the foundation, right? Like today's article is, I suggest you wear protective eyewear. They let it. They let that simmer, right? Yeah. And I think they look around and then they go, "How many people are wearing these goggles?" 
eh, I don't know. It looks like it's not taken. Mm-hmm. And then the next week he comes out and goes, listen, I highly suggest. And then the next week is it's mandatory. And then the next week is you're going to have to wear goggles while you sleep because your pillow could give you the fucking thing. I don't oh, know man. where this thing is going to end and how many orifices are that we have that they're going to plug up. But it's getting ridiculous. It Let me ask you this. And since you got a daughter who is uh, older than mine, I'm the type of dad where I try to make fun in the moment. I don't plan it. Yeah. Like, exa- example, when we go in the pool, I got nothing. I go in there with nothing, and it's almost like uh, like crowd work. I try and do stuff like uh, I said, get on my back and let me let me uh, swim across the pool with you on my back, right? That's right, great dad. Okay, daddy. We she gets on. Now I'm in there, bro. I don't know if you've ever tried this. It's one of the most difficult things to do with a 33 pound little girl on your back, and you're swimming across the pool now i'm dying but i don't want to make it seem that this is hard for daddy yeah 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 yeah. so she's like daddy this is fun and i'm i'm ready to drown bro (laughs) all right so i'm swimming i go yeah it's fun huh I know totally what you're talking about, man. That's totally. Because I don't want her going to her friends going, my dad is weak. <laughs> Bro, for you not to be able to swim right there, it would be like you watching Superman just fall from the fucking sky. Just plop down onto the rooftop of a building across the street. You go, what the, oh. what the fuck just happened? <laughs> you're a hero right now. You're supposed to be able to do anything, right? (laughs) There's another one. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Mommy knows how to swim different strokes. She does the butterfly, the back, freestyle. And last week she was in the pool and she was doing all of her tricks. Even the one where she flips around hits the hits the thing and pushes back. So yeah. it does a somersault because she was on the swim team. Yeah, right? same with Jackie. Yeah, that's a nice move when they do that. All right. Serafina asked me, Daddy, today, she like, you swim across the pool. Now, I could swim. I could get there. But it, it, it tends to be it don't look good. But when your daughter's watching you, I felt like I pulled off, I think Michael Phelps would have been proud, the form, and I didn't even come up for air, because if I come up for air, I stop. I went underneath the water the whole time, which was unheard of. I'd never done this before in my life. And and I made it to the end of the pool, just so she didn't see me stop. Right, <laughs> right. That's your motivation, dude. You got to have Serafina sitting in the room with you when you work out in your gym every day. <laughs> but here's, well, I got I got a swim question for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because same thing with my wife. Now, I know you had the fire up the hill a few episodes ago. We talked about <laughs> Lana outrunning you. But if you were at the ocean and your daughter or son, God forbid, one of our kids was out deep and like needed help and there was no lifeguard around. And you and your wife were of equal location. Would you like go for it completely, or would you turn to your wife and go, go get her? I mean, I'll come with you, but go get her. Like, who would you have lead? Lana would would definitely blow me out of the water. I mean, Jack, I mean, Jackie could be twenty yards further away from the kid than me, and I'd still do a yell back, going, "We need you over here." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know I'm saying. She's a dolphin, man. But yeah, I hear you, man. Oh yeah, no. See, see we. Uh, I don't know if I discussed this on the cast before, but Lana and I, I'd say about four or five years ago, went to Greece, and we went on a boat with a bunch of people that took us to a um, 
basically it, it dropped anchor and there was a red volcano island. It was all red red sand. Yeah. And they said, you know, you could you could swim over there, check it out, and you know, we'll we'll you know, we'll we'll keep the boat here for two hours. So I was like, let's go check it out. And I go, <laughs> You you want me to swim all the way? Now, I'm guessing this was about Mm, 250 yards. Oh, right? S- swim. Oh, that's 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 a max. That's like that's danger zone for me. I mean, I could do it, She's, but it's life threatening. It's a, it's a fucking dangerous I, situation. That's what I was saying. Yeah. But then she she goes. She's like, "Come on, when are when are we ever gonna see red sand?" Right? Uh, apparently, never. Unless someone's, <laughs> unless someone's got a fucking canoe. I, <laughs> I told her, bring some back in your bathing suit. <laughs> yeah, you did, man. Uh, yeah, can you swim Which, back with one hand up? Put it in your palm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but on the flip so, side, man, you got to earn the magic, right? So she starts to swim, and I'm sitting there. And, and I grew up always in fear. I never did anything. It took me... Until I was like 10 years old to jump off the diving board. You know, I was one of those kids yeah. shaking the, my, at my knees while the, while the teacher was in the water, treading water, waiting for me to come off. The, I've always been that guy. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do this. Lana starts swimming. I basically start doing a doggy paddle <laughs> for 200, 250 yards. That's, that's and, that, yeah. <laughs> And when you when you swim in the ocean, that's an entirely different swim because you're getting hit like with waves. Bro. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Trying to catch your breath, and then another one comes. Another one comes. I made it. I was exhausted. I was spent. My body was done. And then we gotta go back. <laughs> we gotta go. We gotta go back another two hundred fifty. Oh, I told Lana, I said, I don't know if I can make it. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it back. I said, why don't you swim back and tell them send a send a wave runner out here or something? <laughs> right. <laughs> but again, I don't wanna be like some pussy, even with my wife. I'm like, I'm gonna like my wife is gonna call a boat to come and get me and bring me back. So I made it, but it it, right. it was was awful but i'm having this I'm wrestling with this activities and doing improv to come up with fun for example another thing we did we took some goggles and i dropped them in the shallow end of the pool and and uh, seraphina went to go get the goggles so we're working on her ability to kind of descend in water and pick up items right now again I don't come in with any of this. I'm just literally in the pool trying to like come up with stuff. It's a great My question yeah. to you. Tw- question to you is: Do I go on Google and look up games we could play in the water so I don't have to come up with these? No, absolutely uh, not. No, no, bro, absolutely. I mean, that's not a guy like you. Not a guy like me. You figure it out as you go. Like, I'm the same thing. I'm in the pool with Sadie the other day. And she's like, what now? And I'm like, oh, I got it. I'm going to go on the, you get your feet on my shoulders. It's called rodeo. I come up and then I'll let you go when you're ready. And we count how long you can stay up. To, right? And now in your head, you're like, all right, this should last 10, 15 minutes. I got 15 minutes to think of another game while we're doing this. And then the wife yells out, how about a snack? You're like, nice. More time. <laughs> I mean, I went, I'm like you. I went in the pool the other day and her friends were there. And they go, Sadie, want to play? And she goes, in a little while, my dad's going in. And you're like, nice. You ever see other dads dip a toe? The kids don't even turn around. <laughs> oh God. So I'm, I'm treading water like you were saying in the deep end and then Sadie swims out to me and she's a really good swimmer but we're going right out into the middle of the deep end of the pool where I've been treading for a while 
and she, I, and she's tired, so she's holding on to me, and I'm holding us both up by treading water, and I'm doing Oof. my best, bro, to try and act like it's easy, like you. I'm like, yeah, I'm talking to her. What do you want to do after this? Meanwhile, <laughs> in my head, I'm like, what a fucking draft, right? And then she tries to joke around. She dunks me a little, and finally I come up. I go, what are you doing? You're going to drown me. Get to the side. Get to the side. And the whole thing was just shattered, you know, and it was like, Panicking me and shit. Oh my daddy can't play that well in the defense. If you want to jump up, we gotta go back to the shell. Oh, <laughs> shit. And it's you said it's now down a peg. It's down a peg. <laughs> Two minutes ago I was cool guy holding us both up in ten feet of water. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> oh god. No, bro. <laughs> I'm trying to come up with so many games. I did this one. I, I, I don't know if you did this, but I was telling her, I go, listen, I'm trying to do lessons in the pool. And I don't know if my, my kids got some type of attention deficit disorder, but she ain't paying it. Like, I go, look me, I go, look me in the eye. Look me in the eye. She goes, what, daddy? I said, daddy's not always going to be in the pool. Okay. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> you ever teach a swim move? <laughs> I, go, I go, we got to practice some real life situations that could happen. I said, I want to take you from from where, where you enter the pool. I want to just throw you in and I want to see. How you behave because God forbid you fall in. Right. I want to see where you go. I like that. Right? I like that. I mean, if you want to take it to another level, you should tell her, listen, sometime in the next 10, 15 minutes, you don't know when it's coming. I'm just going to throw you in the, in the pool. But <laughs> like, don't even give it a heads up. Like right in the middle of a, like let it lick an ice cream cone and then just. <laughs> but, Bro, I, I, I even thought of like. Th throwing her in the pool with her clothes on and her shoes. It's heavier. Just to, right. Yeah, it's, just to see how she behaves. If she tripped. She, yeah. <laughs> That's what you're doing though, right? <laughs> I haven't gone that far yet. Oh, like, I thought you meant like in case she tripped and fell in or somewhere. What about a hawk picks her up and then drops her back in the water? Anything can happen. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I want to give real life scenarios that could happen in the pool and teach her how to react to them. So I tried this one today, similar to what you did. I said, how about you put your feet up on daddy's shoulders and then you jump from daddy's shoulder into the pool? Nice. No, 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 I don't, I don't want to do that. So oh, there's a lot of times oh. I get stunted with, yeah. with like she don't she's too scared to do something yeah because i'm looking for that like yeah we're on to something here we're doing something it's you know it, it's gonna it's gonna snowball into another game yeah but when you get when you get two or three shutdowns on like hey you want to do this and they're like eh, i don't want to do that you're like okay and then and then i gotta do some type of like talking in the pool and try and stall to see if we could get to another game. That's why I'm saying if I had three things going into the pool right. that I know I could go to, it's almost like stand-up where you're like, I got three jokes just in case this improv shit is not working with the crowd. Right, right. I could go back to and go, oh, the crowd goes, okay, yeah, he is funny. Yeah. Could that translate to the pool? It, but the problem is, even if you do, it, they, they'll get old. Like, we were doing a game recently where I hold the, the tube out, and they got to – the kids were loving it where they say mean things to the tube like it's a person. They, but they make me say something to it first. But the parents are watching, so obviously I got to be like I, – I, it's a, the tube looked like a dinosaur. And I hold it over the pool, and I'm like, hey, little girl – Guess what? Christmas is canceled this year. And then the girl, like Sadie and friends, and then the girl would go, oh, yeah, that's what you think. And then they jump into the pool and they keep making me come up with new ones. And I'm dangling. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, they're having fun. But I'm like, this is a nightmare, right? So then <laughs> two days later, one of them says, let's do the da-da-da game. And the other two go, nah, I'm done with that. And I'm like, nice. So... <laughs> 
It's it's going to adjust as her age adjusts, right? You know, as as, as Serafina gets a little older, she's going to want to do more and more. Where are you with floats? You guys doing any float games? Jump no, on. there's no floats. Uh, we were told the floats, uh, you know, they the swim instructor Serafina had said floaties and floating devices prevent the kid from actually swimming on their own. You know what I'm saying? So there is no floats. However, I got another thing I want to talk to you about, and we'll wrap this up. My, I hang on too long to some of the things that are working. Like kids, kind of like you were saying, kind of grow out of the game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm not privy to that until it's like deep into like, like for example, I do this thing with Caruso where I go, Daddy's gonna get you. And he as soon as I said that, he would smile yeah. and lay on his back yeah. and wait for me to kind of give him a raspberry on the neck, right? <laughs> right, right, right. So then I go, Daddy's gonna get you. And then he's looking at me like that's, we're, that's over. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> we like, did that already. It's like your comedy, man. He's like, he hit me with a joke from the first special guy. <laughs> <laughs> I did my, I laid on my back. He did the chest thing. We had a moment. It's like, uh, right new stuff. Come on. Oh, that's great, dude. <laughs> oh, man. That's so, how yeah. you know when they outgrow it is when they let you know. You know what I mean? I Yeah, same thing with Sadie. You know, they outgrow shit. But, dude, you're doing it. You're a great dad. That's half the battle. Caring, doing it, being a part of yeah. it. So no, I'm in, I'm 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 in it for sure, especially with this pandemic. All right, then listen. Let 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 me let you go on your uh, your vacation. I know you got nine days of uh, pure relaxation in front of you with brand new tires on the camper. We also want to remind the people: August thirteenth, Eventbrite, five p.m. Pacific, eight Eastern. We're gonna do a live. Zoom interactive podcast, bringing up the fans, talking to you guys one on one, see what it's all about, and uh, we're gonna have a good time with it. Have a great vacation Thanks, with man. your family. Wear your goggles, wear your masks, <laughs> and cotton balls. We'll be back <laughs> next week. Pete Sebastian Show. Thanks for listening. Later, man. 